All right, guys. Today's video is going to be very deep. I want to discuss ADHD and dating and depression. So, I've had a few girlfriends in my life. One I had for five years. And then we split, you know, a few years back. But when we first started dating, she didn't know that I was ADHD. Because, you know, she didn't know what to look for, for the signs. So I go over to her house with her mom and her sister. And then we're sitting there, we're talking, getting to know each other, you know, we're all getting to know each other. And I go to the bathroom to use the bathroom. And I hear her mom say, how can you date someone like that? How can you date someone that is ADHD? Now, yeah, it hurt. It hurt my feelings. Quite badly. <laughs> To the point where I didn't even go over there anymore. If we, when we were together, she would come to my house on the weekends. I wouldn't go over there and stay because I felt like her mom didn't want me there. Because I can't sit and watch a movie with someone and be quiet during the movie. I'm always moving and fidgety. And I get really hyper and I can get on their nerves. So I quit going over there. But we lasted five years, and it was a pretty good relationship, too. But in the past, that has not always worked. I had another girlfriend for two years. She couldn't take it anymore. Because I would get on her nerves so much by doing things that I couldn't help. And then all through elementary school and middle school and high school, I would like girls. But they would never like me back because I was a weird kid. And so that caused a lot of depression. And I've went through depression for a good while. And it's not always, you know, I don't stay depressed all the time. But I'll have random bouts of it. You know. And I didn't know this until a friend of mine was telling me about it because she also goes through it. That you have high days and you have low days. So with depression, you can have five days where you feel just like yourself and you're happy and want to do things. And then after that five days, that six day hits, you're back on the ground and can't get up. You're so low. And I have been told by people, you know, go talk to someone about it. Get help. There's there's psychiatric drugs out here that you can take to help with your depression. But I choose not to do that. I've made it this far. I'm 34 years old. I've been going through it since I was about 18. 17, 18 years old. And, you know, people... People say, well, you know, when you don't talk to someone, you're going to end up committing suicide. No, I have never, ever had a thought of that. You know. But it's like, you know, I know having a girlfriend isn't going to take depression away from me. But guitar definitely does. As long as I have music in my life. I'm fine. But if any of you guys out there are going through depression and you feel like you need to talk to someone because things are just getting crazy in your head you can't handle anymore, go talk to somebody. And you never know. I mean, there's people out here that get paid to listen to you talk about this stuff and help you through it. I choose not to, and you don't have to, you don't have to go talk to someone, but if you feel like there's no one to turn to, and you can't find the answers that you need from family and friends, maybe go talk to someone. The drugs, the reason I didn't want to take the drugs 
for it is because of my experience with ADHD medication. All the horrible side effects that they have. Like Ritalin, Adderall, and Concerta when I was on those. The side effects were headaches, fatigue. Let's see, what else was there? Muscle pain. Nauseousness. Or nausea. To the point where you would throw up if it was too strong. And then there was one more. I'm trying to remember what it was. On some calls like diarrhea. <laughs> and that sucks when you're in school taking that stuff. Oh my god. But yeah. But anyway. The root cause of, of my random depression was because of my ADHD. And girls not taking interest in me. Now there were a couple. Like one that I had in 6th grade. I've never been able to forget that girl. I still know her name. Still know what she wore on the bus the first time I ever met her. And then there was my girlfriend in ninth grade. She she taught me how to love somebody. She taught me what love was. And my ADHD didn't bother her. She would sit and listen to me ramble on about all kinds of crap. And I would do something that was like fidgety or silly. And she'd sit there and laugh with me. And just be like, calm down. I know it doesn't work, but calm down. And she totally got my ADHD. So she made it a lot better. But then after she moved away, there weren't any girlfriends. <laughs> Not for a long, long time. But, you know, anybody out there that's going through ADHD and it's caused you to be depressed... Over the years, I've learned that my ADHD and girls not being into me shouldn't bring me down, shouldn't make me depressed, because I can't help how my mind is. And the girls that we all like, if you're not enough for them, and they tell you stuff like, you know, this is what you need to do to make me date you. You gotta look the certain way, you gotta act a certain way, you gotta, you know... Have certain views on political stuff, religion. If who you are isn't enough. And they can't accept who you are. Then let them go, man. And I have that issue too. You know, I tend not to do that myself. But. When. Sometimes when you really care about someone. No matter how much they hurt you. You will still always care about them and you can't walk away that's what really sucks and my ADHD like I said with emotion like when we feel something for somebody and we really like care for them it will never go away now I've had a couple girls that I really cared for but once we split away and broke up all that feeling was gone and I was like, well, must not have been real. But I do know what it what it feels like to really care about somebody. In ADHD, our emotions are so strong. Like, we feel things so much stronger than normal people. That's what I'll say. Normal people. <laughs> but, like I said, you know, if you have ADHD or you have depression or any mental disorder... And you really care about somebody, but they want you to basically be somebody else, believe something else, look a certain way, feel a certain way, act a certain way, or get rid of your mental issues. Then you don't need that in your life, because we can't just get rid of it. I'm telling you guys, if I could make my ADHD go away, I'd make it go away tonight. I would sit here right now in front of all of you. And make it go away. But I can't do that. So if anyone out there is dealing with depression because of ADHD or things that have happened to you in your life, you're not alone in it. And if you need to talk to someone, 
try to find a hotline to call if you can't go in person. Or go and, and talk to someone. Like I said, I choose not to. But I would love for everyone out there that deals with it on a daily basis to try to get some kind of help if it's too much for you to deal with. Because everybody's lives matter. Even if it doesn't feel like it, you matter, you are loved, and you deserve to be happy. And the world needs you. So, that's going to end this video. I could go into more depth on it with my ADHD and how it's been for dating for me. So here's something else. I won't cut it off just yet. Now, I'm 34. Now, a lot of people are probably going to watch this video and be very surprised with what I'm about to say. But man, I became a hermit. I mean, I would stay in my room right here where I am right now, playing video games, playing guitar, and just sit by myself. I spend more time alone than I do with people. And my focus sometimes, being so bad sometimes, you know, has made me not even get my license because I'm afraid that I'm going to get out on that road and get distracted when I shouldn't get distracted. And either me or someone else is going to get hurt. And I know, yeah, I need to get over that. I need to get on the road, get my license, get a way of going. But, you know, whenever you become used to something like that. Where you're a hermit, man. You don't come out of your house. There's people out there like that. And uh, I never had a lot of friends. I mean, seriously, like right now, I've got maybe five people that I consider friends. Like good, close friends. And they come visit me every now and again. I'll go hang out with them every now and again. But I've spent more time alone... <coughs> Them with people because of my ADHD. I think they're going to watch me, be around me, and judge me. And it's made me just basically become a hermit. And, and I have a really big problem with shutting people out because of it. And that's, called, that's caused a lot of depression. Because, you know, my sister had a slew of friends that would come over and spend the night with her. She had five people at one time over to spend the night. And I would have one. If even that. Like sometimes they wouldn't even want to come over and spend the night. Because they had other plans with other people. You know, it's cool. That's cool. But I could never have five or six, seven, eight friends over. Because I didn't have five, six, or seven, or eight friends. Like when I was in school, my old buddy Josh... That I met in kindergarten that I told you guys about. He was the closest friend I had. He'd come spend the night. One of my cousins. He would come spend the night with me. And I have one other friend that came over to spend the night from school twice. Three people. But they, they never came all at the same time. So that made me feel really depressed. You know, like nobody ever wants to hang out with me come over and play a game or just come over and experience my world with me like horror movies love horror movies video games guitar talking about venomous snakes and all kinds of crazy crap like that i felt like i was too boring for people and i still feel that way now you know like i still feel like i'm boring and nobody wants to come over and hang out <laughs> but you know what dude being boring and reserved and to yourself, that's sometimes the best way to go. Because this is the quote that I'm sure a lot of you people know. The less people you chill with, the less bullshit you deal with. Now, yes, I was talking about depression and how I can have random bouts of it. And I can. But you know what? I've had more good days. 
lately than bad days. And I don't know, I could have another spell where it's starting to come low again. But there's something about sitting down like this and making videos and talking about things that takes it all away. And I'll get back to being my old self again. So, once again, if any of you guys out there are dealing with anything like depression, anxiety, ADHD, any kind of mental disorders, and it's making you feel bad about yourself, and you can't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend because you feel like they don't want you because of that, because you're not enough, because they want you to change who you are, don't ever do that. Stay who you are. Stay real. Stay humble all the time. And good things will happen. I hope everybody can get something out of this video. And I hope I didn't just ramble on and it sound like a bunch of stupid information. But I hope that all you guys that watch this can get something out of it. Everyone have a great day. I hope it helps anyone that may be going through anything. And if not... <laughs> And you do make it to the end of this video. I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you to everybody that has subscribed to me. And all you guitar players out there. Keep shredding it up. Speaking of that. I've got to do that. So I'm going to jump off. Play a little guitar. Everyone take care. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoy the video.